Are you currently thinking about taking a medication to help you manage your weight? Perhaps you've been someone that has struggled all of your life and your weight has always been an issue. Or perhaps you've gone through the trenches of being a parent and ultimately gained some weight and now that the kids and stuff are a little bit more growing, you now have some time to focus on you. Either way, you're probably just looking for some good quality fact-based information to cut through all of the other crap that you see all over the internet. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about some of the more common options that are available, some of the side effects, and what you can expect when taking some of these drugs. Now, fortunately, we've come to recognize obesity as a chronic disease and not something that is just a personal failing on you of you just not moving enough and eating too much food. We are looking at it in the sense that it is a chronic, genetic, pathological, physiological based condition that is extremely hard to manage. And as our understanding of obesity and its management has increased, thus has the number of agents we have available to us. Now, the medication options that are available are really going to vary where you live. What I'm gonna focus on here are the main ones that tend to be all around the globe and just about everybody can get access to them. But first, as a quick little reminder, in order to lose weight, you fundamentally need to be in a calorie deficit. The calories that are going in must be less than the calories that are going out. There is no getting around this. This is just the laws of thermodynamics and how our bodies work. That must occur for you to lose weight. And that is essentially the foundation of every single diet, plan, program, and whatever that is available on the planet. I don't care what diet you use, it just needs to create a calorie deficit and it needs to be something that is sustainable for you. So first up, we've got the GLP-1 based medications. We have three that are currently on the market. Wagovi, also known as Ozempic, that's the one that everybody and their dog is on currently. We also have Zepbound, also known as Maugero, that's used in diabetes. And we also have Saxenda, also known as Victoza, which is the diabetes version. All of these medications work within the brain and decrease your food seeking behaviors, they decrease your hunger, your cravings, and they increase your satiety or feelings of fullness. All three of these medications are injectable. Wagovi and Zepbound are injected once a week, whereas Saxenda is injected once a day. In terms of the amount of weight loss you can expect from each one, Saxenda we can expect uh, approximately 10% from your baseline. Wagovi gave us about 15% from baseline, and Zepbound gave us about 21% from baseline. Now, all of those are averages. Yes, some people are gonna lose more, some people are gonna lose less. That is just the average number that we got from our big clinical trials with these medications. And hey, if you're enjoying my content and you wanna get more information on how to manage your weight with and without a medication or want more details on these various medications, then you definitely need to hit that subscribe button down below as well, go check out the other videos on my channel. Now, I just wanna give you a really quick note on the percent of weight loss from baseline. So if you wanna figure out how much, based on those average numbers I provided, you might lose based on your current weight. So to figure that out, we need to take your current or baseline weight before taking one of these medications. So if you're say 250 pounds, and then you decide, I'm gonna take Zepbound, which led to an average weight loss of 21% from baseline, we take 250, we times it by 21%, or times it by 0.21, and that gives us the weight that we may lose by using that medication. And so if you're 250 pounds, Zepbound may lead to a weight loss of about 52.5 pounds. Now, in terms of when the GLP-1 based medications start to work, it's gonna vary person to person, drug to drug. So as an example, some people, after their first dose, they're gonna start noticing some appetite reducing effects. Other people might not get an effect until they get to the higher doses of these medications, and that's when it'll really start to kick in and give more of a response for that group of people. Therefore, patience is a virtue because sometimes these drugs, it takes a while to get those doses increased. The reason we take our time with increasing the dose of some of these drugs is to mitigate the side effects that can occur. If we go from zero to 100, well, you're in for a very bad time. 
Now, in terms of side effects with the GLP-1 based medications, primarily we're looking at side effects that are going to happen in the gastrointestinal tract. So with the stomach, it can be things like nausea and heartburn. It could be constipation, diarrhea. These are all certainly possible that can occur with these medications because one of their mechanisms is that they do slow down how quickly food goes from the stomach to the small intestine. Pancreatitis is a very, very rare side effect, less than 1% of people, and this is actually more due to people rapidly losing weight, developing gallstones, the gallstones then irritating everybody in your GI tract there, pissing off your pancreas, and the pancreas thus gets inflamed. Now, most of the side effects, they will go away as your body gets used to the medication. Again, that's why we titrate and increase the dose slowly over time so that the side effects can be mitigated and managed and we can work our way through them and not going from zero to 100 and feeling like garbage. In terms of the black box warning about thyroid cancer, I've done a ton of videos on this thus far. It really is something that's more of a CYA for clinicians like myself because we have yet to have a single human case of thyroid cancer develop. If you want more details on that where I go into the actual data and evidence, then check out the links down below for my previous videos. And hey, also check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel. With the OG members on my YouTube page, I do a monthly live and Q&A session with them. We cover a variety of topics that don't usually show up in my regular YouTube feed and it's really topics that are centered on how to lose weight what are the actual tactics and things that we can implement but how can we also maintain our weight for the long term losing the weight tends to be the easy part how we maintain it that's the hard part so if you want to tune in and get more information then definitely check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel and sign up today so that is the GLP-1 based medications. Those are kind of the ones that are getting a lot of news coverage and such like that. But one of the other agents that's available is called Contrave. Contrave is actually a combination of two older medications. One is called Welbutrin or Zyban or Bupropion or kind of the three names that it goes under. And the other one is called Naltrexone. These two drugs act synergistically within the reward centers of our brain and help again to decrease our appetite and food seeking behaviors. And they may also play a role in helping to reduce the pleasure that we usually receive from food so that we get a decrease in cravings and wanting and are less likely to be, hey, let's go have the cookie because last time, eh, it just didn't do the trick for us. As for the weight loss expectations, on average, people lose about eight to 10% from baseline, really depends on the study that you look at and the various other interventions that they implemented, such as lifestyle and that sort of thing. Contrave does have the advantage. If you don't like the idea of needles and stuff, it does come in tablet form. And what we would start with is one tablet once a day and eventually working you up to two tablets twice a day at the top dose with this medication. I find with Contrave, it's, it's kind of hit and miss. Some people, it works like a hot damn. Other people, not so much. Generally, the people it works really well for are those that have underlying anxiety, depression, or another mood disorder, maybe some ADHD or binge eating. In those people and that kind of grouping, I guess you could say, it seems to do really well because it kind of helps to get two birds with one stone, not only helping with appetite and weight management, but also helping to manage this other comorbid condition. Now, in terms of the side effects, we can expect maybe headache, nausea, dizziness, possibly constipation. Again, these are all pretty short-lived side effects for most people. They go away shortly after you start the medication. There can be an increase in anxiety and jitteriness for some people when they first start out. Bupropion, Welbutrin, and that such is an antidepressant-based medication. It does have a bit of a stimulating type effect, and so it can lead to a bit of anxiousness and jitteriness when first starting out, but it all will calm down the longer you're on it. Other rare side effects can be things like dry mouth, insomnia, increases in blood pressure, definitely more rare, but something we need to monitor for and might make it so that it's intolerable for some people. Now, Contrave is contraindicated or shouldn't be used in individuals that have a history of seizures, are currently using opioid-based medications, so that's like morphine, codeine, that sort of thing, 
and it shouldn't be used in people who have uncontrolled blood pressure. So if you have hypertension or high blood pressure, your blood pressure is elevated and not currently controlled, well, pretty good chance that that contrave is going to push it up even further or make it more challenging to manage. So better to get that blood pressure managed and then look at this medication potentially. And by the way, if you're looking for a tool that can help you along your weight management journey, then you should definitely check out the link down below and download my seven day best weight food journal. With this journal, it's not just about tracking what you're eating on a day to day basis. It's about tracking your emotions before and after a meal. This is so vitally important because this helps us to capture the bigger picture of why you might be eating or engaging with X food. When we have a better understanding and picture there, we can start to identify some high risk times and changes that we want to make. We can also start to figure out what are some of our underlying patterns and behaviors and make a shift and change versus just allowing our brain and body to kind of do whatever it wants. So it helps us to get a much better picture, really create some good solid foundational habits and behavior changes, and ultimately gets to more of the root of what we're trying to deal with when it comes to our weight. So check out the link down below. Next up, we've got Xenical or Orlistat. So the way that this medication works is it actually blocks the enzyme that breaks down fat in our GI tract. For fat to be absorbed and utilized by our body as calories, that fat needs to be broken down into smaller pieces. If it's not getting broken down into smaller pieces, it's not getting absorbed, so you're getting in less calories, and thus what's gonna happen is that fat is just gonna go out with your bowel movement, and voila, you're gonna absorb less calories, potentially get into a calorie deficit, and lose weight. Now this drug does come in an oral formulation, so it's a capsule that you'll take up to three times a day with your meals. Obviously it needs to be taken with the food because it needs to prevent the fat from your food from being absorbed. And for most people, they need to be taking in a moderate amount of fat. So it can't be a low fat diet or the drug's just not gonna be all that effective. Moderate fat seems to be a good amount. And on average, it can lead to a weight loss amount of about six to 8% from your baseline. However, we do have some some interesting side effects when it comes to Orlistat. And, and they're quite, quite shitty, literally. So as you can imagine, having a whole bunch of fat going out with your bowel movements can lead to things like oily stools, probably gonna cause a little bit of abdominal cramping and pain, maybe it's gonna cause some anal leakage, some extra flatulence, different things like that make it um, not the most ideal agent as that fat goes out with your bowel movement. As well, it can decrease the absorption of fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D. So overall, most people don't do super great on this medication. Um, very, very select people, maybe if you're struggling with like IBS constipation, it, it could be an option, kind of lubing things up if you will. But for the most part, I, I generally don't recommend it and have put very, very few people on this medication. Medication. Now, to answer a couple of general questions that I often see in the comment section of my YouTube videos, the first one is, which of these medications is the best one? And for that, the answer isn't as simple as you would think. While ZepBound, on paper, leads to 21% weight loss from baseline, which is the best out of all the agents that I've talked about here, and the best out of all the agents that are currently on the market, no matter where you live, Overall, that doesn't mean it's the best medication. It's gotta be looking at it from the perspective of what's the best medication for you. And so that's gonna depend on the individual and their other cool mobile conditions that they have going on. As I've said, I've seen some people do extremely well on all of the above medications and they've well done well beyond what was expected from a clinical perspective in those average numbers. So it's gonna really depend on what you have going on, your own genetics, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things that are gonna influence how your body loses weight, how quickly it loses weight, and so on. Ultimately, this is a really a conversation that you need to have with your care provider to figure out what's gonna be the best option for you. The next question, do I need to take this medication forever? The answer is yes for most people. In fact, about 85% of people, based on the perfectly controlled clinical trials, what we have seen is that, yeah, 85% of people, when they're taken off of the medication, ultimately start gaining the weight back. There is a small subset of 15% that are able to continue maintaining the weight that they lost on the medication, but that is a select smaller group of people in a very well controlled environment. So in real life, that number is probably even less. Nonetheless, it's not impossible. It's just going to be really, really hard. 
Again, this applies to what I said at the start about obesity being a chronic disease. So that means it's in the same realm as diabetes and high blood pressure, that if we have a treatment that's managing that condition and we remove that treatment, well, the condition is just gonna come on back. As for a few other pro tips, I want you to keep in mind and remember that this isn't supposed to be something that we're rushing to get as much weight off as quickly as possible. It has taken you a long time to get where you're at to this current place, and it's gonna take you a long time to lose the weight and be able to maintain that weight long term. These medications, they are just a tool that are gonna make it a little bit easier to maintain that calorie deficit more consistently. As well, please don't compare yourself to anybody online. I don't care what Rachel on Facebook did and how much she lost. I mean, are you Rachel? Do you have Rachel's genetics and Rachel's lifestyle? Sorry to all the Rachels out there. I'm not actually intentionally picking on you. I'm just, just saying, just a name. Make sure that you are doing this for you and focusing on your journey and your journey alone. Everybody else's journey is gonna be completely different because every single one of us is a little bit different. My next pro tip is to make sure you check your expectations before you wreck yourself. So a reasonable amount of weight loss that you should be expecting to lose with or without the medication on your journey is anywhere from half to two pounds per week. Some weeks might be more, some weeks might be none. The goal is just to keep chugging away and if you're getting and falling within that trend of losing that amount week to week, then you're on the right track. You're doing extremely well and the goal is just to keep on going. If you're expecting to lose more than that, if you're expecting to lose 10 pounds a month or what have you, well, I can guarantee you're gonna eventually set yourself up for failure. All right, that is it and that is all you beautiful people. I hope that gives you a nice straightforward breakdown of some of the medications that are currently on the market. Yes, it was a very high level overview. If you want more information on each of these medications, then you should definitely go and check out my YouTube channel. As I said, hit that subscribe button down below. Go check out the channel where I have a lot more detail where I go into some of the science and background when it comes to the medications. As well, if you're looking for some further support on your weight management journey, you can book a consultation with myself at the link down below, or you can shoot me an email and we can discuss longer term coaching options. I have a couple of spots available on my roster that are open for a brief period of time. So if you want some support, shoot me an email or sign up for a one-on-one -on -one quick session today and we can review your goals and what you need to do to get moving in the direction that you want. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to share it with anybody else that you think might get some benefit from it. And as well, don't forget to check me out on my other channels. I'm on the Tick, the Talk, the Gram, at the official Dr. Dan. As well, check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where I do a monthly live on a very variety of different topics and we do a live Q&A. So if you have any further questions and you want to chat with me and get a response in real time, that is where you want to bring your questions. And as I always sign off, please remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.